Hello, hello, hello. Welcome all of you beautiful light workers, empaths, energy healers, just seekers. My name is Yolanda and I want to welcome you to my podcast, Reiki Radio. And the purpose of Reiki Radio is community. I really want to create this space for all of us to learn and share and exchange on these paths of self-realization, self-discovery. And the truth is, you know, when we start out on these paths, a lot of us feel alone in the journey because not everyone in our lives understands the shifts and changes that we're going through. And not everyone understands our curiosities or what it is that we're learning about. So it's always nice to have community. So welcome to your community. Welcome to Reiki Radio, and I'm sure we'll get to know each other very, very well. Now, with that said, I want to invite you to visit my website. If you have any questions about any of the shows, if you have any stories that you would like to share, or more importantly, if you have anything very specifically that you would like me to talk about on the podcast, please reach me through my website, which is uchi.com. That's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. Now, today we are going to talk about how chakra flow may impact your financial flow. And I thought this would be a great way to start because a lot of people get stuck in a place of stress and anxiety around finances. And this um, really everything can be tied back into our energy and what we are generating energetically. So we're going to talk about that today. But first, I want to tell you just a little bit about me. My name again is Yolanda and I teach Reiki and intuitive development and just a range of topics within this realm of spirituality. And I will be the first to tell you that I believe that we are all on a spiritual path. I think this life journey in of itself is a spiritual path. It's a spiritual journey. And we all have various ways of waking up to who and what we are. And we all have free will and choice to decide what we want to do with these lives that we are given. So for those of you who are here, I would venture to say that you are either Reiki practitioners or have an interest in Reiki or some type of energy work or just your own self-discovery, your self-realization, your path of awakening. So I welcome you here because Although this is called Reiki Radio, I will share a lot with you about that technique in of itself, but we're going to talk about all of these different (laughs) aspects of our self-awakening and these different tools that we have. Like I mentioned a moment ago, our intuitive development, our chakra energy, um, different tools like oracle cards and so many things, meditation, all of the beautiful resources we have to help us awaken to our own ability and really awaken to our own design. So Reiki, Um, I'm actually going to do a show, probably the next show, to tell you all about what Reiki is to me. And Reiki and why this is Reiki Radio is because this is the technique that I started out with on this journey of self-exploration and it has been such a gift in my life. And so I do want to share more with you about that, but again, I'll save that for the next show. So today, we're going to talk about the impact of your financial flow and how that relates to your energy, and we'll use the chakras as a map. Now, if you're not familiar with chakra energy yet, that is okay. You'll learn a little bit about them today. You can learn more about them on my website, and I'm sure we'll talk about them as well on the podcast. So the first thing I invite you to do is, if you're not driving and it's safe for you to do so, grab something to write with so that you can take notes and really consider for yourself what your energetic flow is and how this may be impacting your current financial situation. 
So let's just start with a general overview of what the chakras are. Now there's a lot of information out there about chakras and um, there are lots of school of thoughts around chakras and we learn a lot about them, especially those of you who may practice yoga. I have also done my yoga teacher training and learned a lot about my chakra energy through that. But another thing I have done is I have connected intuitively to learn some more about the chakras, which again, I will share with you over time. But our chakras in general are our energy centers. So for those of you who are not that familiar with them, they are these wheels or points of light that commonly we see depicted as aligned down our spine from our root chakra, which is at the tailbone, all the way up to our crown chakra, which is just above your head, right at your crown of the head. Now, we do have more chakras than the main seven that we often see depicted, but the main seven are the ones that we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> so, these chakras, these energy centers, they are generating your energy. They are generating the energy of your consciousness. They are often referred to as the gateways of consciousness. And the reason that is, is because your own thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs are what shape and impact and influence your flow of energy, your chakra flow. So when you hear people talk about chakras, oftentimes you'll hear them talk about balancing their chakras. They're talking about balancing their energy, allowing their energy to flow in a more harmonious and balanced way. That's when your life force energy, or some refer to as chi, when it's flowing in a harmonious way, that speaks to our overall wellness. And for those of you who practice Reiki, I'm sure you're familiar with um, the idea that when our chi or our life force energy is imbalanced, we can use a technique like Reiki to help bring us back into harmonious flow. So these chakras can really reveal a lot to you about the energy you hold. But to gain more understanding about it, you want to examine your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs. Now, each of your chakras is very specific to um, a type of energy, very much directed towards a very specific state or um, not state, but a point of consciousness, which you'll see in a moment. But what you want to consider is your thoughts and your feelings. Are they causing this particular energy to flow easily? Do you have thoughts, feelings, or beliefs that are causing energetic blocks within this energy? Or are you even having thoughts, feelings, and beliefs that are causing excessive energy, which will also throw you out of balance? So that's just a quick overview of the chakras, but today we're looking at them very specific to your financial flow. So if you are able to you know, take notes, I want you to write down first your root chakra. So write down the root chakra, and this is the chakra that is, again, at the base of the spine. And your root chakra energy typically is related to our feeling of stability, our security. So think about the roots of a tree, right, going down into the earth. It's what stabilizes us. It's also the energy of being in body. Now, when this comes to your money, I want you to think about how you feel in your body when you think about money. Just the thought, money. What is the first feeling you have in your body? Do you feel excited? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel that you have enough? Do you feel stable? Do you feel secure? And just write down whatever is coming to mind for you. Don't overthink it. One of the things I'll share with you throughout the podcast 
is to trust your intuition. And oftentimes with that, we just go with what pops in first instead of overanalyzing and letting the analytical mind take over. So whatever is coming up for you right away, when you think about money, think about how you feel about it and whether or not you feel secure. Write down what comes up for you. Just take a quick note and you can even write down the question for yourself so that you can revisit it later. Now, before we go on to the next chakra, I just want to point out that this is so important, looking at your own energy and again, looking at your thoughts, your feelings and your beliefs, because this is what determines what you attract or what you may be blocking in your life. Now, one of the things I want you to keep in mind right now is although you may say, I want more money, what you may be holding in your consciousness, your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs around money may be uh, contradicting the thought that you want more money. So now you have a dual belief. You have these two things that are fighting against each other, these two energies that are not working together. If on one hand you say you want more money, but on the other hand you believe you can't have more money, that's not really supporting you. Another example that's common is some people will say that they want more money, but they may have beliefs that money is evil. They may have beliefs that it's hard to get. They may have beliefs that people who are wealthy are evil, awful people. If that's what you're believing about money, of course, you're going to create some blocks around it. Another common thing I want to point out really quickly, just to see if you are holding any of these beliefs within your field, is a lot of people are afraid of seeming greedy. So they say they just want enough, just enough to get by. And while you may be receiving just enough, that may have you in a state of stress and anxiety and panic because you don't have that cushion, that feeling of security, stability. So again, start thinking about your feelings, your beliefs around this and how these energies may be affecting your root chakra energy. All right, so we're going to move up to your sacral because it's only a 30 minute podcast. <laughs> so we want to go through as quickly as possible. Your sacral chakra is just around the navel area. And this energy is very much related to our feelings, our emotion, which is directly tied into what you create. What you create in your life, what you manifest, what you attract is fueled by your feeling. It's fueled by your emotion, your passion. So this sacral chakra energy, you really want to consider how you feel about money. How do you feel about it? And whatever comes to mind first, jot that down. Trust it. And in this space, I even want you to consider what you feel it takes to attain money. Do you hold the belief that it's something you have to work hard for? Do you feel nervous around the idea of having a lot of it? Now, one of the examples I want to give you with this, just think about this honestly. Uh, I have uh, worked with several people, and even I've said myself, to be quite honest, I would love to win the lottery. And whenever I am working with a client and they tell me something like this, they would love to win the lottery, my first question is, well, what do you think will happen if you win the lottery? How do you think people will treat you? How do you think people will view you? What will your life look like? What will change? 
Now, on surface, the idea of just winning the lottery sounds fun. It's amazing, right? I'm sure we can all think of all the things we would do with millions of dollars. But on the other hand, again, we often have these duality or this dual belief, and a lot of people have a lot of fear around being wealthy that is lying beneath the surface that you may not even think about because no one ever asked you the question. So I'm asking you now so that you can be aware of the energy that you hold around wealth. Now, one of the common fears that comes up for people around this is if they are wealthy, will people treat them differently? Will people expect or want too much from them? Or will people only like them because they have money? Or some people are afraid of, you know, will someone uh, want to rob me? Will I be safe? All of these things. Will people think I'm awful? Will I be judged? Will I have to hide the fact that I'm wealthy? Now, these beliefs don't plague all of us, but some of us have fear around wealth. So really consider for yourself, is there anything at all that makes you feel uncomfortable about being wealthy? And again, the reason this is important is because if that is something that you're holding on to, it could be blocking your financial flow. And so you have to know what you're holding on to in order to work through those energies, in order to identify why you hold these fears and then making the choice to change your perspective. And, you know, the work that we do around this, there are so many ways we can work on this, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But for now, we're going to move up to your solar plexus. Now, your solar plexus is the energy right beneath your rib cage. And I like to think of the solar plexus as your internal sun. I mean, it's pretty easy to remember because the first word, solar, right? And this energy is identity. It's your personal power. Think of the sun, how bold it is. It's also action. Now, when it comes to money, I want you to think about if you feel you deserve it. However you identify yourself, do you feel good enough? Do you feel worthy to have money? Now, that may seem like a strange question, but again, a lot of times we don't consider these things until we're asked. And the beauty of this today is you can really get to know what energy you hold. So do you feel you deserve wealth? And what do you do? Are you taking any action to support your financial flow? You know, a lot of times we want our financial flow to change, but we don't necessarily take steps to support that. And it could be something, for example, sometimes we have enough coming in. Perhaps we just have too much going out. And it could be because we like to shop a lot. <laughs> Maybe we don't have the best um financial plan for ourselves or you know sometimes it's you may want to do a different type of job or work or something else that would bring in more income but you don't necessarily take the steps to do it so there's so many things around the action that you take or not in relation to your financial flow now, I mentioned, of course, with your chakra energy, your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs are huge in what you block and attract, but your action is also crucial in this whole formula of what you manifest, the action you take or don't take. So write down for yourself right now, what are you doing to support your financial flow, or is there something that you know you could do differently that may be in more support of your financial flow. Just take a quick note for yourself. And even with these different thoughts and energies, for example, do you feel deserving or good enough? 
if for some reason you say no, I want you to write down why. Where does that belief even stem from? What made you feel that you weren't good enough or didn't deserve it? Was there something that was ever said to you? And how can you change that perspective, change that belief? And if no one's ever told you, I'll tell you now, of course you're good enough. <laughs> the universe is infinite with more than enough for all of us. It is abundant. And sometimes we block our blessings, so to speak, because again, we don't want to be greedy and we want to make sure there's enough for everyone and there's more than enough for everyone. We just have to be willing to accept it, which moves us up to the heart chakra. Now the heart chakra is the heart center. It's at the very center of your chest and it's the center of your being. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the chakra energy today, but what I want you to know is that the chakra, your heart chakra, is the bridge between the lower chakras, which are the first three we just went through, and your upper chakras, which will be the next three that we go through. Now, your lower chakras, the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus, are all related to the divine feminine energy. It's more of an earthy, grounded energy. And the upper chakras, the throat, the third eye, and the crown, are more connected with our masculine energy, but also considered our spiritual energies. But the truth is, everything about you is spiritual. <laughs> and all of your chakras are spiritual, but again, not today. We will not go into that today. But your heart chakra. Now, how this relates to your financial flow. I want you to think about your ability to give and receive. What is your energy around giving and receiving? Now, generosity of heart is huge. Being generous, not because you expect something back. Now, one of the main things I want to point out for you right now, the intention beneath your action is more important than the action itself. Now, I'll say that again. You may want to write it down. The energy, the intention behind your action is more important than the action itself. So when we think about giving and we think about being generous, it's not to receive something in return. You don't give and expect something back because you're giving then with expectation and motive, which oftentimes leads to disappointment, but it's not the true energy of generosity. When we are truly in the space of generosity, we are giving from a space of love, period. You're giving because you want to help, because you want to be supportive. Again, it's the energy of love. Now, your generosity also opens up your channels for reception just naturally. But again, you want to give from a space of love. Now, on the other side of the coin, you also want to see if you are open to receive it's all about balance. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people are very prideful and they may be very generous. You may be someone who will give to anyone. You may be someone who would give the shirt off your back. But when you are in need of help, when you are in need of support, are you able to receive it? Now, again, a lot of times people are too prideful to accept. And that energy causes a block of reception within your field. As important as it is to be generous, it is just as important to be open, to receive. And there is a beautiful humility in being able to receive. 
When we have and we are able to give, it feels good. And when you are in need and on the receiving end, it can be very humbling. But both of those are beautiful energies, generosity and humility. And again, they bring us into balance. So you really want to check in with yourself here at the heart chakra and see if you are able to give and receive. Do you have an issue or discomfort with either one? If you don't like to give, consider why. Is it because you're afraid that you won't have if you give? That fear of not having is causing disruption within your energetic flow. If you are unable to receive or have uh, some pride around receiving, that energy will also cause disharmony in your energetic flow. So both of these, giving and receiving, lead us to one of the biggest energies of the heart, which is gratitude. Being thankful for what you have right now. Now, the reason this is so important is because we're talking about your financial flow. And a lot of times when we feel that we are in need or we feel that we are lacking, we forget to acknowledge all the gifts that we do have, what we do have right now. And so this energy of gratitude helps to bring you back into a space of alignment, into a space of balance and a space of open, open to receive and also being open to still give. Now, the reason this is important is because when you do feel you are lacking and you do move into that space of fear, it causes congestion within your field. It causes disruption, disharmony within your energy, which then can manifest into stress and then anxiety and all of these things. And it can really throw us into a loop of just, a mess, right? But we have more clarity when we are outside of that fear and confusion. And when we have clarity, we can often see our opportunity. We can often tap into our inspiration or be motivated to do something differently, be inspired to create differently, do things that will be more in support of our financial flow. So consider your gratitude. No matter what is going on for you in your life right now, take a moment to think about what it is you can be grateful for. What are you grateful for? And after this podcast, even take a moment to sit in gratitude for whatever it is you are thankful for. Just sit and meditate on what you're thankful for until it starts to dissolve the stress, the fear, the worry, and recognizing the beauty and the gifts of your life even right now. Okay, so we're going to move up into the throat chakra. And your throat chakra is that chakra right in the center of your neck. Now our throat chakra is oftentimes related to our communication, and this could be verbal or nonverbal. But in terms of our financial flow, I want you to think about what you say. What do you say about money? Now, this is very important. And again, probably one of those things you don't even think about much. But think about the stories that you've heard that you may have taken on and now you repeat. Some stories like money doesn't grow on trees. Stories like money is the root of all evil. Stories like I'm broke. Now listen, you may think that is true because of your current financial state. But what you might not know is the impact and the power of your words. I always tell people be mindful of what they say because they are casting spells. I say that what you speak is literally spell casting. We create based on what we say. You are 
shifting, manipulating, and um, transforming energy through what you say. Your words are powerful. And not only do your words influence what you actually create, what you attract, what you manifest, you often say the same things again and again, which then creates patterns within your field. And now you've taken your spell casting to another level because now you've created these patterns. And so because of what you have said about money, because of the stories, what you would say, you have created these patterns that keep showing up in your life where, for example, maybe money comes in, but it seems to go out just as quickly. Is that a story that you say? Is that something that you say often? Or even, again, I'm broke. Is that something you say often? Think of the energetic impression that creates in your field. Now, a lot of people are into the secret, right? And a lot of people get the idea that like attracts like and you know, using positive affirmations and what you put out there and all of these things. But it's much deeper than you may even realize. So be mindful of what you say. Really pay attention to the stories you say around money and your financial situation. So if you are struggling with finances right now, you may want to say, I am creating solutions around my financial flow. Say that instead of I'm broke. Or say that I am connecting with or aligning with my inspiration or aligning with new resources so that I can increase and maintain my financial flow. Anything that you may be saying, any stories floating around in your mouth <laughs> around money that may be blocking your financial flow or creating patterns that you no longer want to be in, think of how you can change those words. What can you say to change those patterns? And then you're going to go back down to your solar plexus and consider which action you can take to support your new stories. So, as you can see, the chakras work <laughs> together as well. But again, we'll talk about that another day. So we have to move on because we're going to go over time. We're going to move up to your third eye. And the third eye is located in the very center of your head in between your eyebrows. And this is considered like the energy of your intuition. Your third eye is your ability to see beyond the physical realm. It's the energy of um, our dreams. Yes, our intuition and so on. But today what we're talking about is how this relates to your financial flow. So I want you to consider what you believe is possible. When you think about your financial flow, when you think about your wealth, the possibility of wealth, do you have any limitations? What do you believe you are limited by? Now, if you're stuck with this, I want you to fill in these blanks. I would have more money if. Or fill in this blank. I will have more money when. Now, either thing that you wrote after your if or your when are helping you to see your current limitations or these beliefs that are currently limiting you 
because they're taking you out of reception now. It's showing you where you believe that your financial flow isn't going to improve right now. But the truth is that's just a belief. And all of our limitations are created by our beliefs. Well, the good news is that you can change your beliefs at any time. I always tell people you want to change your life, change your mind. Once you change your mind, you by default change your energy. Once you change your energy, you change what you attract, what you block, what you create, what you manifest. So look at what you believe is possible and really consider any beliefs that are limiting you any limiting beliefs or ideas you have around money. And don't, don't try to hide this from yourself. This is a space to be totally honest with yourself so that you can work on these energies, so that you can work on these beliefs. And something I want to tell you right now, because as we journey through Reiki Radio together, it's going to be a lot of looking at ourselves to understand ourselves so that we can transform with more awareness, so that we can awaken to the truth of who and what we are with more love and compassion. Now, I want to say this now because this is not a space for judgment. There is no judgment here. So no matter what is coming up for you, no matter what thoughts, feelings, or beliefs that you're starting to realize you may hold about money, don't judge yourself. Don't beat yourself up over it. You may have held those beliefs because it's what was taught to you. You may have held those beliefs because of past life experiences. Wherever it stems from at the moment, it doesn't matter as long as you know what it is you're holding because you have the power and the choice to change your perception and your belief. So just write down whatever is coming up for you and know that it is going to help you in increasing your financial flow if you choose to change your position. Okay, so finally, we're going to move up into your crown chakra, uh, the beautiful crown just above your head. And again, just in relation today to your financial flow, what I want you to think about is what you embody overall. Just in a general aspect, write down for yourself, what energy are you generating around money as a whole? What thoughts, feelings, beliefs are out there in your field around money? Just jot down whatever pops up. And again, with all the notes that you've taken today, hopefully you will have some clarity around what you can personally work on to assist you and in increasing your financial flow or creating more harmony and balance within your financial flow. And one of the things I want to share with you before we go is that oftentimes we are limited by what we think is possible. And we may think there's only one source of income. So for a lot of people, it may be they think that their job is their only source of income, or you know, some people think the lottery is the only source of having a lot of wealth. But the truth is, when we are open to all possibility, we allow the universe to support us and to guide us in the highest and best way. So when we release control, and we release the limiting beliefs that we have. And we just ask to align with resources that will support us in the highest and best way. When we ask the universe to support us and guide us in the highest and best way. And we truly get out of the way. And we start to pay attention to what shows up, the synchronicities. We start to pay attention to the people that we meet that may 
help us or know something about exactly what it is we were looking for. Or you start paying attention to how whatever it is you say to the universe you need help or support with, all of a sudden someone tells you about a particular book or a class or a podcast, something that speaks to what it is you needed help with. That's the universe showing up to support you in the actions that you choose to take. Now, that's the key. You are the one who has to take the action. You are the one that has to make the choice to change, to transform, to heal. You are the one who has to choose to manage their own energy. And the first place we come to this management of energy is by acknowledging, first of all, what we hold. So one of the things I'll say to you as you journey forward, whether it is about your financial flow or just any area in your life, be an observation of you. Start to acknowledge your thoughts, your feelings, and your beliefs about whatever the topic may be. And then you will understand what it is you are attracting, what patterns you may be creating. You'll also understand what it is you may be blocking. But the beauty in all of it is then you also understand what it is to work on to help you to come in deeper alignment with yourself and your desires. So I hope that this was helpful for you today. Again, I look forward to journeying with you through so many topics around this realm of spirituality and awakening to the beauty of who and what you are and really helping to empower each and one of you, each and every one of you with the tools to start to be your own energetic healer. Noticing and realizing the power you have for the energy you hold and what you do with it. So that is all for today. If you have any questions, again, want to reach out to me if you want to have a session with me or you just want to share whatever may have come up with for you, you can email me through my website, which is uchi.com. That's Y-E-W-C-H-I.com. I will see you next time. And remember to always journey in love.